Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Yeti and I live in Ontario, Canada. I moved here a couple of years ago as a permanent resident and on this channel I just share with you my thoughts on the real life issues immigrants deal with and I talk about the immigration programs available for you to immigrate to Canada. I moved here a few years ago um, through the Federal Skilled Worker Program. I got my permanent resident status and this is the program I'm actually going to be talking to you about today. Uh, the Federal Skilled Worker Program is one of the three programs under the Express Entry Program. And in this video, I'll be talking about the selection factor points used by Canada government to actually assess your eligibility for the Federal Skilled Worker Program. Uh, with the points you get in the selection factor, you can actually determine if your chances in the Federal Skilled Worker Program is high or if you need to actually apply for other programs in addition to the application you've made uh, to the Federal Skilled Worker Program. If you want to keep getting this kind of information, if this is something that interests you, uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel because it will help you in your immigration uh, journey, your immigration process. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like the video if you found any of the information I've shared with you today useful. And click on the notification bell so you get notified when I have new videos. But right now, let's just get started on today's topic. Like I was saying earlier, uh, you have three programs under the Express Entry Program. You have the Federal Skilled Worker Program, the Federal Skilled Trades Program, and the Canadian Experience Class Program. Uh, but like I said, we'll be focusing on the Federal Skilled Worker Program because this is the only program you can actually use to get your permanent resident status from outside Canada. So out of the three programs, the only one you can use to get your, your residency out of, out of Canada is actually the Federal Skilled Worker Program. The other two programs require that you have some sort of education or experience in Canada. So there are six factors used to determine your eligibility and each one have some points that have been assigned to them. The total score you can have is 100 and as at January 2021 when I made this video, the cutoff point uh, is 67 for the Federal Skilled Worker Program. So if you score above 67, you've met the requirement needed to apply for the Federal Skilled Worker Program, but if you score below 67, uh, don't lose hope. You still get some other programs that are applicable to you. Uh, you have the Provincial Nominee Program, the Atlantic Immigration Pilot Program, and some other programs uh, which I'll put on the screen. Uh, I don't know this side or this side. I'm just going to put it on the screen. And I also made a video earlier where I actually did talk about these 12 programs that are available to immigrate to Canada. I'll put the link in the description box below or on the screen. Uh, if you want to uh, watch it later, you can go ahead and watch it when you're done with seeing this one. But let's continue before I lose my train of thought. Uh, so, even though you don't meet uh, the score for the Federal Skill Worker Program, which is 67, I would advise that you should still apply. Uh, you should still apply because sometimes you find that the provinces and the territories can also still recruit candidates from the Express Entry Pool uh, through the Provincial Nominee Program. Uh, because if they have some labor market needs that they need to meet, even though you don't meet the Federal Skilled Worker Program uh, score, the Provincial Nominee Program will actually go in there and pick you from the Express Entry Pool. Maybe because of your education or your experience, they might just nominate you. So what I've done today is to make a presentation that I'll be sharing with you that would allow us to go into more detail about each of this factor. Uh, that I talked about earlier and I've actually arranged them in this way because of the score associated with each uh, factor so the very first one is your English language or your French language skills and this would actually take a maximum of 28 points so which is why you want to really work on this the second one is your education which you take 25 points then your work experience is 15 points your age is maximum of 12 points and your adaptability this is about if you have relatives in canada do you have a spouse or a partner who is going to come with you are they as educated as you yourself do they have english and french language ability do they also have work experience you know things like that uh what is under the uh, adaptability uh requirement then also there's the job offer so if you also have somebody who's offering you job from canada and you're outside of canada you also get 10 points for that as well so let's go into details of what each of these things mean in nigeria for example IELTS is one of the big issues one of the big challenge for people when they want to actually do their immigration process but i want to assure you that there's no process out there 
that you would not do IELTS. So have it in mind. This thing is not as hard as you think. You can do it. If I can do it, if a number of us here who have immigrated can do it, you can also do it. And you need to work on it because it carries a lot of mark, and which is going to help you um, not only in your eligibility requirements, but also when you finally get into the Express Entry Pro. And for either English language or French, you'll be tested on speaking, listening, reading, and writing. So if you get um, CLB7, for example, you end up getting a score of 16. But what I want you to understand is don't aim for the lowest score. Aim for the highest score because you would have people in that pool with you. You have millions of people in that pool with you. You're going to compete with those people. So you want to make sure as much as possible, put your very best into it. And for education, you can get a maximum of 25 points. And Canada expects that you would have some sort of um, degree, maybe a university degree. You could have a college diploma, even a trade license or certificate would actually also do. If you have just high school, you're going to get just five points. If you have a college certificate of one year, for example, a diploma, you get 15 points. But if you have a two-year degree, let's say you did uh, some sort of diploma, you did your OND or your HND, you end up getting 19. This doesn't mean that if you have OND and HND, then you have 19 plus 19. No, that's not the way it goes. So it's just if you have either OND or HND, you have 19. But if you have two certificates, you also have 23 points. But if you have a BSc, for example, from a college or a university, as long as it's a BSc, it could be three years, it could be four years, you will end up having 21 points for that. And if it's a master's you have in any um, subject, you end up having 23 points. And a doctorate, you would have 25 points, which is the highest point you can actually get. So there's a reason why I mentioned those two things to you first, because they are the ones carrying the highest scores and they are the ones you can actually change. Because for example, you can't change your age, for example. So whatever age you are, it's what age you are. You can't change that. Your work experience as well. You can't be 25 years and be claiming that you have 15 years work experience. So you really can't change that as well. But for your education, you can change it. You can decide to have another master's, for example. You can decide to go get a certificate. For example, it's going to add a little bit to your score. Work experience has to be in the national occupation classification that Canada has set out. You need to have done this work in the past 10 years. You need to have done it for at least one year continuously, which would be equivalent to 1,560 hours. So for example, if you are just maybe 23 years old or 25 years old, you really can't changes it a lot because maybe you have just a year experience the age is also very important is one of the things that will actually determine what kind of programs you can apply for because the truth is when you start going above a certain age the score you're going to get in your eligibility requirements and also when you finally get into the express entry pool uh, will be determined by your age so my advice is that for anybody who is above 37 Aside from you applying into the express entry pool, you should also make sure that you're applying for your provincial nominee program. It's really important because um, you are at already a disadvantage because of the age, because Canada actually has like an age range they are looking to, to actually contribute into the economy. So if you fall within 38 to 47 years, what I would advise you to do is to actually apply for the provincial nominee program or the atlantic immigration pilot program because uh, your chances in the federal skilled worker program will be very low because you won't be getting enough marks once you are 47 and older you don't even get any points which is actually why it surprises me and it really pisses me off when i hear people call me like my former colleagues and friends and they're telling me oh i'm talking to this consultant now and he's going to do and he's trying to get my immigration to canada and it, the person is 50 years old i'm like i don't know of any immigration program to canada that allows you to come here at 50 years old unless you're coming here to um start a business i just keep hearing these stories and i'm like you don't even qualify for any program so what program is this consultant actually helping you do so you want to be very careful when you're actually talking to these people, make sure you're vetting them over and over again before you go to spend your money. Don't get scammed. So if you have a valid offer of job in Canada or employment in Canada, you would also be getting 10 points. And the last one, but not the least, 
is your adaptability in Canada. If your partner does the IELTS or the French language exam as well, TEF, they get to give you extra five points. If you yourself or your spouse also have relatives in Canada that are either Canadian citizen or permanent resident and they're more than 18 years old, they also give you five points. So the Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada website actually have a tool that you can use to get what your um, eligibility factor would be. So I'm going to take you to that site, plug in some values for you so you can actually visualize what your score will be in different scenarios, which is something I really advise people to do. You want to go in there, put in these values, see how things will change with different scores that you get. For example, if you have nine in IELTS, what would it be? If you have eight in IELTS, what would it be? If your age is this, what would it be? So right now we're on the Government of Canada website. And from this website, you can actually find out if you're eligible to apply or not. So I'm going to be making some assumptions along the way. So the first thing they're asking for here is they want to know what province or territory you plan to live in. So for the purpose of this, I'm just going to choose the very first one that is on the list, which is Alberta. Then we'll go to the next page. It's actually um, not, not a very long process. Within 10 minutes, you could actually find out what, whether you qualify or not. Second thing they will ask you is your English language or your French language um, test. But what I want to say is that this is one of the reasons why I say you need to actually have had your English language test done or, and you need to have had your credential assessed before you even start thinking of starting the immigration process to Canada. The popular exam that we do in Nigeria and in most part of the world is the IELTS. So we're going to click on that one. Then we'll move to the next uh, question. Let's just use 2021 January 1st as the date you did this test. I'm going to use 8.5 for everything because this is what I want you to be aiming to get in your test because uh, depending on your age and your education, you might need to get as high as 8.5 or even 9 in some cases. And here is going to ask if you have any other language. Well, when I mean second language, they mean French because the major language in Canada is French or English. So we're going to say no. So I'm going to choose two or more years uh, as the experience you've had on a particular job. So it's not like you've done six months on this job, six months here, three months here. He needs to have been at least one year continuously in one role. And how much money you have in Canadian dollars. For the purpose of what we're doing right now, I'm just going to put the highest value. And here is asking when is your birth date. Then right now is asking if, if you did not earn a Canadian degree, diploma or certificate, you may need to have your foreign education assessed. So that's what I'm saying. Even before you start looking at do you, are you eligible to apply, you must have assessed your credential. You must have done your English language test because that was the mistake I made. I had not even done IELTS. I had not even assessed my credential and I retained a lawyer for one year. So by the time I had finished doing my English language test and assessing my credential, the one year was almost up. My advice is do all these things before you get your lawyer or your consultant to help you. And honestly, you can do this by yourself because you still end up doing most of the work yourself anyway. So let's say you have just a bachelor's degree and we'll go on to the next page. So right now I'm going to click no. You don't have any relative in Canada. You've not schooled in Canada. You've not worked in Canada. So none of the above. And for this purpose, I'm going to choose married. And as you can see here, it says we are eligible to apply. To apply online, you will need uh, this personal um, reference code. And this is everything you need to actually um, continue your application. So I'm just going to do one more. But this time, I'm going to use somebody who is 50 years old. Because once you are above 47 years old, you are not actually eligible for this process. You can decide to go to the province or territory, but you are not eligible for the Federal Skilled Worker Program. So if you are above 50 years, I'm, I'm assuming you have more than six years experience. And what is your date of birth? Now we're going to go choose a date that will make you 50 years old. So we're going to do May 1st, but 1970 this time. And it's asking if you have um, a Canadian degree, diploma or certificate, or have you assessed your certificate? So we're going to do the same thing. You have just bachelor's degree. Do you have anyone in Canada? And I'm going to say none of the above again. So like you see here, it says it, says it immediately. Based on your answers, you do not appear eligible for the express entry. So with what I've just shown you and the explanation I've made, I hope you now have a better understanding of the immigration process and now you can determine which of the programs you should actually go for and which one do you qualify for. So before you go investing your time, investing your money into this program, you want to be sure that you actually qualify. 
you want to be sure that somebody out there is not just going to be wasting your time dashing your oaths knowing fully whether you would actually not qualify for this program so in my next video i'm going to be going into more details about the federal skilled worker program uh, which is actually used for the express entry pool so you know what documents to collect you know the order with which to collect it and what you need to be focusing on and why i want to do this is because i keep finding out that people are doing the express entry program so people will actually go to do ielts even before they do their credential assessment and with the nigerian situation sometimes you ask for your certificate it doesn't even get to the assessment body for up to one year so before you know it your english language test which is only valid for two years would actually expire so you want to make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you can have all this juicy information and if you found anything i've said today useful make sure you like the video and also click on the notification bell so anytime i am out with any of those videos you can actually be notified and if you have any questions for me you can drop those questions in the comment section of course i don't know answers to every question you'll ask but i'll try my best if i don't know the answer I will direct you to the link where you can actually find the answer. So uh, thank you so much for watching vi this video today and I hope to see you in my next video.